We now have a couple more worrisome measures of the economy that strongly suggest unemployment is about to soar. One of those is tied directly to plunging consumer confidence. And according to the latest data on that, the speed at which Americans have become pessimistic about the current situation over the past couple months is itself a major, major warning. But economists like to dismiss these mere feelings in favor of some good old fashioned mathematics. So we're gonna use some math to prove that Americans, regular Americans, actually do understand more about how an economy is changing than all the PhDs out there. They and the entire financial media have scorned this derisively named vibe session because it isn't consistent with their narrow few macroeconomic data points. Well, the math clearly shows those data points are going to follow confidence. Yep, everyday regular folks are far better at predicting small economics than the entire body of professional economists. Not only that, history is also firmly on the side of consumers' opinions. And I'll give you an uncanny example just to show you exactly what I mean. And just for good measure, we'll also go over another mathematical relationship that economists use regularly, which is also strongly suggesting unemployment is ready to shoot much higher from here. The Psalm rule after the July payroll report got all of them shook up for a little while, but Psalm is only where it begins. That's only where the bad numbers start, and they keep piling up one after another after another. The Federal Reserve says the unemployment rate's just gonna stop right where it is and level off, magical soft landing. Average Joes say the economy's in far worse shape. And while the Fed does love its math, especially when it contradicts the regular everyday American, regular consumers, lay people, they've got the math on their side in this case too. We'll start with consumer confidence. University of Michigan released consumer confidence estimates for the month of August, 2024, and they were, well, they were mixed, but really mixed because of reasons that have nothing to do with the economy. The overall confidence index actually moved up in August to 67.8 from 66.4 in July, but most of that was just future expectations among Democrats who became more positive after they ditched Joe Biden. So 67.8 might be up from 66.4, but 67.8 is not up for current economy reasons, which are actually going in the opposite direction. Perceptions about the real economy and the current situation plunged yet again. According to the University of Michigan's Current Conditions Index, that one comes in at 60.9 from August, in August, down from 62.7, but most important of all, it's down 21.6 points in just five months since March. These same five months we keep coming up with recession signal after recession signal after recession signal. And in this case, it's not about consumer prices. And back in 2022 and 2023, consumer confidence had absolutely plunged because of the supply shock and the effect of consumer prices on everyone's budgets. But here in 2024, it's not resurgent inflation because of never inflation, nor is it consumer prices except as the past destruction of purchasing power. But in this case, it's all about employment. Americans know something's happening in the labor market and the economy overall, and they're saying so when asked about how they rate the situation right now. And of course, the financial media, as it often does, has dismissed these confidence signals as nothing more than a bunch of whiners who complain about an economy that's actually doing really good in spite of all the headwinds surrounding it. But this vibe session stuff is nothing new. In fact, I'm going to read you a quote here. It's, it sounds like it was written just yesterday. Ask Americans how the economy is doing, and their answer is stark. It is not just bad. It is run for the hills terrible. Consumer confidence is at its lowest level in almost 30 years. Only 12% of Americans think the economy is in good shape. On the internet, comparisons to the Great Depression are widespread. But the reality is different, according to the media. According to most broad measures of how the economy is doing, it's not all that grim. But so far, the economy is holding up better than it did during the last two recessions in 1990 and 2001. Employers haven't shed as many jobs, the unemployment rate is still relatively low, and gross domestic product has kept rising. Doesn't this sound really familiar? But it wasn't written just yesterday or June. It was written in June of 2008. Yes, June of 2008. They were calling it a vibe recession 
or vibe session without using that specific term. Consumers were in the tank. They thought the situation was grim and getting grimmer. And economists in the financial media and policymakers and central bankers said, well, GDP's rising and the unemployment rate, well, it's going up, but it's still low. Sounds familiar. They're not done either. Back to June 2008. This has left economists trying to figure out why Americans' perceptions are so much more negative than the data analysts use to measure how things are going. Quote, we're saying that we feel a lot worse than we did at the depths of the last recession when we had two or three million job losses, that we feel worse than we did after 9-11, said William Cheney, chief economist of John Hancock Financial Services. Quote, at some level, that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Well, it didn't make a whole lot of sense to Mr. PhD economist, but it sure as hell made a ton of sense to the everyday American who actually saw what was coming. So while the media couldn't figure out what June 2008 was all about, regular everyday folks had it pegged. And of course, reality turned out to be the way consumers were feeling, not the way that, that uh, economists and policymakers wanted you to feel. What was the quote here? At some level, that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it does make perfect sense when you actually realize that consumers have a view on the ground in the aggregate that economists could only hope for with their spreadsheets. But like I said in the introduction here, we're going to use mathematics. We're not going to just leave this to some notion of feelings. We're going to show why you should, we should pay closer attention to consumer confidence than the mainstream media and economists' view of rising GDP or not enough layoffs to be a recession. Because think about it. Consumers have a view on the situation as it's, un, as it's unfolding, but not just in terms of layoffs that are happening today. They hear conversations. They hear their employers. Nowadays, they're in Slack channels. They understand what's being, what, what's being talked about. And though companies may not be laying off workers right now, though that's arguable too, they can tell it's coming. And so we see constantly, time and time again, is that consumer confidence falls off during recession before the unemployment starts to soar. Again, like I said, we're going to do some math here, so I'll show you exactly what I mean, why you should pay attention, closer attention to consumer confidence. We'll just do a simple regression to start with. A simple regression between, on the one side, the University of Michigan's Consumer Confidence Index, and we'll just use the headline index. We're not even going to use the really bad current index. The headline index for consumer confidence from the University of Michigan. And on the other side of that, we're going to use the U3 unemployment rate. So the major unemployment rate versus consumer confidence. And when you do an initial regression for the last 30-some years, I'll go back to 1988 just so we capture a couple different uh, economic cycles here. At first, it appears as if economists are right. There is no relationship or doesn't appear to be a relationship between consumer confidence and the unemployment rate. The R squared on a simple regression is just 0 0.1672. That's not very good at all. But notice on the chart here, there does seem to be a solid grouping in the upper part of a chart, on the upper part of the graph, that looks like a solid correlation with a whole bunch of outliers to the bottom and left. And those couple areas outside of that region where there does seem to be an inverse correlation, which there should be, right? If consumer confidence is rising, the unemployment rate should be falling and vice versa. If consumer confidence is falling, we'd expect the unemployment rate to be rising if, this was, if there was any validity here. But looking at those couple areas outside of that region where there is, does seem to be correlation, you can clearly see at the bottom one, the lower one on the left-hand side, that's the supply shock era. You see all the dates here, 2022 and 2023, they show up pretty strongly. That's because consumer confidence fell off during that time because, as I said in the introduction, because consumer prices were soaring in a way that we haven't seen since the 1970s. It wasn't 1970s style inflation, but it was lost purchasing power. So there was no relationship between tanking consumer confidence and the unemployment rate but only in that one case of 2022 and 2023. So if we eliminate that part as a one-off, as a, as a unique, unique period in economic history, suddenly, if we just use the uh, period between 1988 and 2019, the R squared goes up to 0.5446, and now we're getting somewhere. Now we're seeing a more solid relationship between consumer confidence and unemployment, but notice that we still have that second group of outliers that's a little bit closer to the, to the main channel of data here. And in that other group of outliers, this other group of outliers, you can make out clearly some dates, some common dates that keep showing up in that. And I've circled it here for you so you can see it, what I'm talking about. 
And you see clearly 2008 shows up, as does 1990. And those two years are very important because they're recession years. In fact, they're not just recession years. Both of those years, including the quote that I just used from June 2008, they're the early part of the recession years, during, when we, during the time when we hear the economy's holding up really well, soft landing, everything that continues to repeat in all of these economic cycles. So what that suggests is that during the early part of recession, consumer confidence picks up on it first. Consumer confidence goes down sharply before the unemployment rate really gets going higher. In other words, consumers understand we, we get more pessimistic as we get closer to that point of non-linearity in the unemployment rate and unemployment overall. They can sense that it's coming. And if this point is true, if I, what I'm saying is correct, we should be able to establish that in using the same mathematics. All we would need to do is measure consumer confidence today versus the unemployment rate in the future. If consumer confidence is predictive, then we'll just lag the unemployment rate by six months or a year to see if that improves the relationship. And lo and behold, it absolutely does. If we lag the unemployment rate by six months to consumer confidence, what you get is an R squared that jumps to 0 0.6978. It improves remarkably. And if you lag it by 12 months, it improves a little bit more. The R squared goes up to 0 0.7253. So what that shows very strongly is that consumers are predicting unemployment. Outside of that outlier period in 2022 and 2023, historically, there is a strong relationship when consumers get really negative, the unemployment rate is likely to go substantially higher over the next six to 12 months. Now, what this shows with R squared of 0.72, unemployment is not the only factor here. It can't be the only factor in consumer confidence, but it is definitely a primary one and most of the time. So when we go back to the recent period, consumer confidence that's falling all of a sudden in 2024, either that's because the supply shock is coming back, which we know it's not the case, there's no evidence for that anywhere, or this is becoming more like the historical example where consumer confidence is falling off pretty sharply because consumers can, can, can sense unemployment is about to shoot higher. And over the next six to 12 months, at least around 7%. And if we use the current conditions index, which is down around 60, it suggests that the unemployment rate in six to 12 months would be somewhere around seven and a half to 8% and higher. Now, a couple of months ago, that sounded pre preposterous to most of the people in the mainstream. But now as more and more data comes in, doesn't seem so outlandish anymore, does it? Consumers have the ability to understand and therefore we can use this data to predict unemployment. According to this, the historical relationship and everything else that we're seeing, consumers are saying unemployment is gonna go sharply higher from here. And the math backs it up. And that's not the only one. Economists like to cite something they call the beverage curve, which was named after a British economist, William Beveridge, who realized quite simply just common sense that the demand for labor and the supply for labor, there should be some relationship between those two. So the beverage curve puts together two of the most charitable views on the labor market that we have. The job openings part of jolts, which is really a vacancy rate. So we take jolts and we, the job openings data and we, we, we change it up a little bit. And then the unemployment rate. So job openings or the vacancy rate is supposed to be the demand for labor. And there's two different versions of the vacancy rate. The Fed likes to use the job opening uh, statistic over the labor force, divided by labor force. Well, the BL BLS uses job openings divided by job openings plus the establishment survey. But either way, it's just, it's just to turn the raw job openings number into a vacancy rate, which is the, supposedly the demand for labor. And on the other side, you have the unemployment rate, which is supposed to be a measure of the supply for labor. But as we know, job openings massively overstate labor demand, dummy postings, ghost listings, and everything else. And the U3 unemployment rate massively understates the labor supply because of the participation problem that leaves too many people out of the labor, a lot of the labor force. So we have the two most charitable views of the labor market. We put them together in this beverage curve. And what it's supposed to show is that when demand for labor falls, the unemployment rate tends to rise and vice versa. When demand for labor rises, unemployment rate is obviously going to fall. 
it looks almost like there's two very different curves. On the one part of the curve where it looks vertical, that's where demand for labor is very strong, but the unemployment rate doesn't go down very much because theoretically it can't. It's at the it's a point of full employment. So economists look for that spot on the beverage curve because they think that's inflationary. It should lead to rising wages because demand for labor is high and there's not enough, enough slack in the labor force. So I'd like to focus on that part. But we're going to focus on this other part, the flat part of the beverage curve, because as you can see, once the demand for labor falls enough, what that suggests is that employers have gotten to the point where they no longer are hiring people, they're cutting back on hours, but also they're starting to look to lay off workers. When demand for new workers goes down too much, that tells us that we're at the point where employers are going to start laying them off. You can see we're getting really close to that flat spot on the curve. The spot on the curve that suggests that demand for labor has dropped enough that employers are going to start laying everybody off because they've gotten to the point with weak economic conditions. They no longer want to hire. Now they do want to start to lay people off. And if we used a more accurate uh, view of job openings than we have for jolts, we would be right in that same part of the flat, the flat part of the beverage curve. So if we had a job openings rate or vacancy rate that was just a little bit less than its very, very charitable view right now, the most optimistic view that we have, even the most optimistic view that we have is getting very close to the flat part on the beverage curve, which is where unemployment shoots higher. So in reality, it's very likely that the vacancy rate, the true vacancy rate would be very close, if not already at the flat part of the beverage curve. And if it's almost there, then unemployment is likely to shoot much higher in the short run here. So we have consumer confidence that continues to really tumble here. In fact, the, the current index is down 20 some points in five months, which is a solid recession signal all its own. But consumer confidence is not plunging because of resurgent consumer price pressures. It's plunging because of the historical relationship with the unemployment rate. And by using our mathematics here, just simple regressions, consumer confidence is telling us that uh, six months to a year from now, the unemployment rate should be above 7%, if not substantially higher. And again, while that seemed outlandish not all that long ago, even economists are now saying, ooh, maybe it's actually not, because the, da the data and evidence continues to pile up in that direction. As I've been saying, just from using the unemployment rate itself, we're getting to that point of non-linearity where the unemployment rate goes sideways, meanders a little bit higher for a long period of time, and then seemingly out of nowhere, it just shoots upward. What we're saying here is that the data, the evidence, and even the math is adding up to that point where it begins to shoot upward. The Fed says the unemployment rate is going to level off right where it is, and everything else, including their own math and their own beverage curve says, we are, we are very close to that other point, the non-linear non -linear part of unemployment. So consumer confidence isn't the only thing, nor is it the SOM rule or the beverage curve. We've also got common sense. Well, all the PhDs, they don't have common sense, but they have math. Well, in this case, regular Americans have both the math and the common sense. And those two things show you that we're just at the beginning of this unemployment thing, not the end. Don't forget too, everything that we just talked about here in this video is consistent with all the market signals that we've been getting showing that interest rates are gonna go quite a bit lower. I talked about that in the video link below. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Huge thank you, Eurodollar University members and subscribers. And until next time, take care.